One of the problems in the mushroom industry is the growing mistrust between new growers and vendors who are selling spores. More often than not, when you buy a spore syringe, you'll receive what appears to be a clear liquid. So how do you verify how many spores are in this syringe? Let's fire up the microscope. What's up, mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today at my farm in Sedalia, I'm talking about how to quantify the amount of spores in a given spore syringe. So there's many applications for this, um, whether it's figuring out how much syringe to inject into a grain spawn bag or on an auger, or if you're just determined to find out if there's actually spores in this thing that you just bought. Both of those problems require a microscope and a hemocytometer. If you're interested in high quality liquid cultures or other mushroom products, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. I have over 30 different strains of cultures that I've bred and procured in-house. So whether you're starting a mushroom farm or you're just a hobbyist, go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. To give some insight into this problem of mystery volume or mystery concentrations of spores in a syringe, you kind of have to think about how those syringes are made. So there's a bunch of different ways to make a spore syringe. You can either concentrate those spores in a small volume of liquid and then draw up that liquid into a syringe or you can take a big volume of water and then scrape off spores into that water. So from a vendor's perspective, it's probably more efficient to do the latter, which is why oftentimes it seems like you receive a syringe and there's nothing in it. So since spores are microscopic, you're going to have to get the microscope out to ver verify if there's spores that are present or not. One useful tool for counting spores is a hemocytometer. So this is a glass slide that has etched in grids to help you orient yourself while you're underneath the microscope. So the first step is to take a drop of your spore syringe and put it onto your hemocytometer. Hemocytometers come built in with two chambers. And the reason for that is to average out the counts from both sides. And then this makes it more accurate. So you're going to want to put a drop on one side and a drop on the other side and wait three or five minutes until those cells settle down to the bottom of the slide. So once they're all settled, they're not going to move around on you and it's going to be really easy to get a count. It's really important when you're counting the cells to have a plan in place. So you're going to want to start at one corner and work around in a serpentine pattern so that you don't miss any squares. Another thing to think about is if you get a spore that's on one of the grid lines, so for myself, I'll make the rule that if it's on the bottom left or the bottom, then I'll count that. So if it's in the shape of an L, I'll count that spore. But if it's in the top or the right hand portion, I'll skip that. And that way you're not double counting spores. So I'm going to take what appears to be a clear solution. It's just a clear spore solution. And I was told that there was spores that was in this and they should be viable because they're hydrated and they're in solution. So I'll take my drop and put it on either side of the hemocytometer and allow those spores to settle. Now I'm going to focus in at a 10x objective so that I can just get the grid into focus. And then once I have that in focus, I'll switch it over to the 40x. 
and that allows for me to see the individual spores. So then I'm going to start at the top right hand corner and start to go through the grid. And then as I'm going through, I can count on my cell phone. Um, there's cell counting apps, or you can just use a, a word processor. And every time you see a spore, just type the, the letter S. As I go through the whole entire slide, I'll count up all the text at the end, and then that will give me my concentration of spores. Once you have a defined amount of spores, it's really helpful because you can kind of determine how much volume you need if you're going to add it to a Petri dish. So if you're looking to breed your mushrooms, it's more helpful to have a lower concentration of spores so that you get a separation of those colonies. So if you had a really thick spore syringe and you put a drop onto a dish, you're gonna you're gonna have to spread those out somehow because otherwise all those spores will germinate on top of each other and you're not going to get a variance in the genetics that you're seeking. But since I found a syringe that has less concentration, I can take one or two cc's knowing that maybe only 50 spores will be in that whole volume. And then that way I could spread it out across the whole Petri dish in hopes of getting many colonies instead of just one cluster. Another pro to having a low concentration is that if there's any contaminants in that syringe, those will also be low concentration. So it's actually beneficial in a way to get a really dilute spore syringe because if there's any contaminants, then those will also be diluted. So I hope you understand the value of counting spores in your syringe. And for all the vendors out there, now you have some accountability. So make sure that you're producing top quality product moving forward. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you're looking for high quality cultures, go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. The link is in the description below. Until next time, much love.